My name is Dave. I'm 30 years old, and I'm the presenter, producer, and co-director of Big in Japan. And also the subject. Yeah. Um, the guinea pig. The guinea pig. The famed guinea pig. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Lewis, I'm 28, and I was the co-director alongside with Lachlan McLeod, and I also edited the documentary. Okay. Just in 25 words or less, what is Big in Japan about? Big in Japan is about fame through the journeys of foreign celebrities in Japan and my own outrageous fame experiment. And through doing so, learning about the nature of fame and how it's changing in this modern era of fame and how that's different from old fame. Did you guys have to draw straws <laughs> to decide who was going to be it or? No, it was always Dave. It was right. always Dave. Uh, Dave has a very uh, unique look about himself. Um, he's also quite likeable. And so uh, we always... <laughs> um, and so there's, always, there's also been this history of Dave being someone who is instantly recognisable um, by other people. So. Uh, yeah, we just put two and two together, and we've also Lachlan and I used to live with Dave, and we always we always used to film him because he would get up to some crazy antics. Dave, did you submit to this voluntarily, or did they have to talk you into it, or was it just to presume that you would be the focus? Uh, it, there, there was there was a small amount of discussion involved. Um, basically, uh, these guys presented the idea of uh, going to Japan to conduct this fame experiment and it sounded so crazy that in that instant it seemed like something I would do and I, I sort of all all of a sudden just envisaged what that meant in terms of uh, it being like a, an experiment and how interesting that would be. Um, we had been thinking about the topic of uh, fame and accessible celebrity for some time and it just sort of clicked when the Japan idea came along. Because the film, congratulations, is very funny. It's a very, very well made, very well edited film. I'll ask you about how much you shot a little later. But, so it's a very funny film and the premise seems to be, from the outset, a comical one. You must have known that it was mainly gonna be a humorous film. Just to clarify, can you just tell me about the serious underpinnings of why you made this film? Yeah, sure. Well, um, I guess we're at a time now in which uh, a lot of us have grown up with reality television. Um, a lot of us have uh, s witnessed uh, some kind of celebrity revolution online with fame now practically at our fingertips. Um, whether we realise it or not, um, we're being encouraged to uh, perform and fulfil a certain kind of persona online. And um, I, think, I think it's uh, whether people will admit to it or not, their behaviour is changing because uh, of the screen and how they present themselves. So we were interested in that. Um, I was interested in that personally as well. Um, and I wanted to see whether this this sort of uh, we present fame as being something that people want um, people should want through reality TV and and online culture we celebrate it I wanted to investigate and see whether fame is after all a good thing you guys being in your 20s can you just tell me about what it was like growing up with that because I'm from a generation that didn't grow up with it I saw it arrive and slowly evolve. But you guys are half my age, <laughs> thereabouts. And you grew up, just tell me about growing up with that culture, when you became conscious of the allure of just putting yourself out there in public. Uh, I guess growing up in it, you're sort of just inundated with this constant uh, message and this constant uh, lesson from society that uh, fame is something that is readily accessible, um, but not only that, it's something that should be aspired to. And so I think when you're growing up as a young person, you're not really cognizant of that. You're sort of obviously just growing up doing your own thing. Um, but I guess the moment that it sort of really clicked for me, or the moment when I sort of had to step back and think about it was um, when you start hearing about really famous people on YouTube or really famous people on Instagram who are famous for doing things that are preposterous, famous for 
doing things that are ridiculously dangerous, um, famous for doing things that are, you know, absurd. Um, and you look at them and you see how can this person who is, you know, objectively not very talented, have two million views or six hundred thousand subscribers? And what does that affect? What does that, you know, phenomenon? Um, what does it do for them? Yeah, what does it do for them? But also, mm. what does it do for young people who are growing up and looking at this and seeing, yeah. wow, I can get two million views because I can do this. And so I guess that's when, you know, the penny dropped and we were like, we should look into this. And up until recently, it was very easy to monetize it and to make money from that's it. That's right. But what is it about Japan that makes it so bizarre a place for a Westerner to visit? So for a Westerner to visit, yeah, well, I guess... Uh, we, I mean, the world knows that Japan is a very stimulating um, place, a very, uh, it's got a lot of bizarre subculture. So on that um, level, it's, it's interesting already. Uh, on another level, um, Japan is, uh, f for foreigners, it's got this, uh, it's got this sort of uh, culture of, of foreign celebrity over there and and um, for us it was sort of this uh, it was sort of running parallel uh, to the situation we're at now in terms of Western culture and fame suddenly being very accessible um, so now it's so uh, it's very easy for ordinary people um, that there is a perception that it's easy for ordinary people to become famous um, well, that sort of phenomenon has been existing for years in Japan. Um, ordinary Westerners who don't know any Japanese or uh, have never acted before are uh, being um, launched into the limelight and have, um, you know, um, careers that they can live off, uh, mostly doing s slapstick things on television, which is just hilarious. And we thought we'd, we'd uh, we thought that would be a nice uh, comparison point and also hilarious to watch. It, because, yeah, the reality is somebody like Dave, who doesn't, who's never acted before, uh, and who's got no theatrical talent, would realistically have no chance of getting on stage or on screen or on a TV ad in Australia. But in Japan, on the virtue of his foreignness um, and the look that he has, uh, is able to get onto an ad for you know a major car company in Japan. True. Okay. So in that sense, it's like a safeguard for the experiment. So. What if we made this whole doco about me trying to get famous on the internet um, and I didn't ever get to experience that fame? That would be uh, a bad result for the documentary. <laughs> so it was a way to ensure that I did actually, I'm not going to give too much away, but I may, I may have experienced a bit of that fame. So um, I can therefore comment on it. Now, while you uh, were there trying to get famous, you also were working as a teacher. All of you were working as teachers, yeah. presumably just to sustain yourself so you could, so you wouldn't go broke, so it's you true, could just stay yeah. over there. So you did appear in a number of commercials and TV shows. You got quite regular work as a foreigner, as an actor there. How much did you actually make compared to your teaching? Could you have given up the teaching? to do the, um, the, 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 the acting work? Because there is a scene where you, you mention how often you're having to call in sick mm. for your teaching job so you could do this, this other work. Yeah. So, yeah, it was quite, quite well paid. Some of them were ridiculously well paid. Uh, and when you consider the, the caliber of acting, which is pretty low <laughs> it was uh, just astronomical so to give you an idea my highest paying gig was um, three and a half US dollars for two days work three and a half thousand three and a half <laughs> three and a half thousand US dollars for two days work and how much was the teaching earning you teaching um, teachers get paid roughly uh, 30 Australian dollars an hour in Japan okay. yeah pretty good okay but now you were there about a year mm. going through this experience. And overall, would you consider the, the experiment a success? Was it a successful social experiment? Yeah. Yeah. 
I would say so. And how did it change you, Dave? <laughs> Having uh, gone through this roller coaster, for the sake of the cameras, we have to say you didn't do it as 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 a, something that you needed to do. You did it for the sake of the documentary. But even with that caveat, how did it change you? What did you learn from it? Well, um, I I developed this sense of separation from me for this me the sc in the screen and in the camera um, in terms of my my um, not the documentary but in terms of uh, what I was doing for fame and that was sort of a dealing um, uh, mechanism for me I think um, so yeah, sure. I mean I think it's like that coping mechanism that people do when they're like you know when there's people looking at them and that's I think what people who become famous and people who want to become famous have to deal with it's that separation of them as a person and them as the figure that people see, and I think Dave experiencing that is yeah, it's interesting. Key. I think everyone that we interviewed uh, had that separation. Um, maybe not some of the YouTubers who were just starting to experience the fame that then maybe their identity in real life was not too different from the, their identity uh, in their vlogs. But um, for the most part, those that were uh, at least some way up the ladder they had that very obvious separation. And what about you? Did you have any changing perceptions about the process of fame or the nature of, of instant celebrity? Yeah, I guess, like, because we, we went into it sort of all guns blazing, sort of not really sure where it was going to go, um, just like filming as we went. And the first sort of person that we kind of... Um, got involved with was uh, Bob Sapp, who was this like, you know, six foot five American former wrestler. He's a former wrestler. Yeah. Who's basically <laughs> over there now, he, he, he built up this great celebrity profile as, what was he doing? He wasn't wrestling, he was just, no. he was just a personality. He was just a person. He was a big, just... black, That's right. funny, Slightly. mock, mock nasty, but really cute. That's right. Guy. Yeah. From America. Yeah. Who didn't have much success. star. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I guess, like, you know, throughout the 90s and going into even the, the, the um, early noughties, like, he was quite a big deal in Japan. And he was, you know, uh, on billboards, he was on TV shows, he was a huge deal, and everyone knew his name. And I guess when we first started interviewing him, we were kind of like um, almost a little bit starstruck because there were so many people who knew him. You know, we'd walk down the street and people would just be like taking photos of him, etc. But uh, I think, yeah, as part of the journey that we went through of making this documentary, uh, you kind of discover that there's that veneer of success and veneer of, um, you know, being loved by strangers, but... There's more to it. There's more to it. Mm. And that there's the, yeah, there's a deeper sort of um, well that exists underneath that that, um, yeah, I got, to, I got to see firsthand. Now, it took you a year of shooting in Japan, and then you've come back and you've edited it together. How much footage did you have? Don't ask. It's yeah. a 90 minute film, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. so what was the original? We were actually there for, sorry, just to correct you, we were actually there for two years. Two, I'm sorry, yeah. two years. And so we were pretty much any, any day or any half day that we had that we weren't teaching English, we were pretty much filming. Right. So. There was a lot of footage. We're, yeah. we're currently, I don't know, I've got about uh, six hard drives, uh, you know, one to two terabytes each, and they're all full of footage. Yeah, so it's That's been... almost, well, that's, you're shooting on, presumably on, on 4K? Well, this was, no, yeah, yeah, this was just prior to 4K, so, um, yeah, it's a lot of footage. Yeah, I was going to say, that actually adds up to thousands of hours yeah, of footage. Yeah, so it's been a, it's been a mix. A lot of sense. It's been a process. But you know, um, there's another strand to that as well. I mean, we authentically pursued fame on the internet um, as part of the experiment. So we made all these YouTube videos and we spent a long time, um, like, sort of, uh, we took it very seriously and, and wrote scripts, got them professionally translated, bought props. Cut, like, um, it got to the point that Dave was actually storylines. Dave was actually quite proficient in Japanese. Okay. Like he was very, very good at Japanese from a you know 
during the time that we were in Japan. Um, so yeah, it was. We went full out. Yeah, we, we were really interested. Yeah, like it was like a fun thing for us to do. Like we were really interested in that experiment. Like that. That was really. Uh, I mean, we are telling a story, but it's yeah. That was that was really true. Like we we had a lot of fun making these stupid videos. And all those videos are still up. They're still up. They're still up. Yeah. Have you monetized them? Or worse. Have you monetized them? Um, no. Maybe maybe we should. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, are yeah. you guys going to continue making movies together? <laughs> uh, yeah, we will. <laughs> it's just we're going to take a long break first. Yeah, right. yeah. it's been yeah. a it's been a very very hard slog. Well, it has, it's and so. yeah, unusually so. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans for your next film? Another doco? Or are you going to do? Yeah, something a bit more structured. Oh, we do have a project. <laughs> like, um, no, we don't do structured. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a rule. <laughs> Chaos only. Yeah. Uh, we um we do have a project that we've already filmed like a whole lot of, but we can't um talk about exactly what it is sure. unfortunately because it's about a sensitive topic. It's cool. Um, but it is a another fish out of water story. <laughs> um, that sort of takes you to another place and makes you think about things um, and I guess uh, our culture's role in um, certain global issues so um, that's where I'll leave it, it and I guess uh, if there's any stamp that we might have on um, like a style of documentary I guess it's uh, a uh, we try to make it as human and relatable as possible um, and we don't try to, uh, we don't want to like lecture um, audiences about certain issues. We just want to uh, bring people along on an adventure. So that's, that's what the next documentary will be.